Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, then welcome. My name's Christina, and on my channel, we talk all things beauty from my own experiences. So if you guys are looking for the best and most honest how-tos and reviews from a consumer's perspective, then make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave any comments that you have for me down below. We're gonna be going over my current favorites. I have a ton of products here. I did do quite a lot of traveling this last month, so it's essentially everything that was in my travel bag, and I'm very excited about them. As quickly as possible, I want to go over the best things about the products and what make them my favorites. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. I hope that maybe you find some of your new favorites or we have some similar favorites. So the first favorite I want to go over is a new skincare routine and it's called Skin Cycling. If you guys are not aware of skin cycling, I will link down Dr. Whitney Bow on TikTok. She talks all about skin cycling and what she recommends you do. And essentially what it is, it's cycling exfoliation night retinol night and two recovery nights and you just rinse and repeat after that so it gives your skin kind of a blueprint on what products to use what nights to use them and how to properly like cycle them to where your skin isn't irritated and you start seeing the best results out of your active ingredients so i've been skin cycling the end of august beginning of april and at first my skin was really purging because i was one traveling and two starting a brand new routine so i had to get my skin used to that and i started seeing a lot of really good results in mid-september and around this time is when i started using glow skin beauty products which I'm going to be talking about a couple of those that I've implemented every night of my skin cycling routine. My skin overall is looking so bright. There's a lot less texture and I feel like my hyperpigmentation is slowly fading and if not, maybe that's like in my head, but I'm definitely not getting more hyperpigmentation, which is a huge concern of mine. My main concerns with my skin is my dullness, hyperpigmentation, and the oiliness in my T-zone. So I wanna go over a couple of key products that I think are making a huge difference in my routine. So for the first night of the skin cycle, it's exfoliation. And the product that I've been using for that is again, Glow Skin Beauty. This is a Hydra Bright Pro 5 liquid exfoliant. It has AHA and PHA in it. And if you're not familiar, chemical exfoliants are anything that's an AHA, PHA, BHA, and they rid your skin of dead skin cells. It helps with cell turnover and really just to regenerate that skin in order to get a new healthier layer of skin on top. And if I really want to couple that up with another exfoliating product, I would use this cleanser. This is the Hydra Bright AHA cleanser. So this one has alpha hydroxy acids. And sometimes I'll use this the morning of my um, exfoliation night, or I'll use it that same night. And I also just feel like this cleans the skin really well. It doesn't feel stripping or drying, and it just preps the skin for my entire routine. So the next night of the cycle is retinol night. And sometimes if I don't want to use this super strong retinol I just want to change it up or something or if I feel like my skin just needs a little extra recovery and it doesn't really want to deal with all those active ingredients then I'll use something like a moisturizer that has retinol in it and this one is from Glow Skin Beauty as well this is the BioRenew EGF cream EGF is epidermal growth factor and essentially what that is is it mimics the natural proteins in human skin that helps with regeneration and restorative like barrier because this has the EGF and the phytoretinol which is a natural retinol it's a lot less aggressive than a regular retinol so it's really great for beginners or anyone that is just struggling with their skincare barrier but still wants a little bit of that retinol benefit to it this would be a really good option for you because it's encapsulated within that moisturizer and for recovery night I focus a lot on hydration a lot of skin barrier barrier repairing serums and one of them would be this BioRenew EGF Drops. It's a little bit of like a milky consistency but it's thin enough to where you can layer it with other products and it soaks into the skin really nicely. It doesn't just like 
stay on top of it. It doesn't feel sticky. And I feel like it speeds up that process for recovery in order to start doing those actives again. And then in my morning routine, I like to incorporate vitamin C serum or a niacinamide serum or both depending on if those formulations are more advanced formulations to where you can use them together. And something that I've been using every morning is this Glow Skin Sea Shield Anti-Pollution Drops. It has 15% vitamin C, which is a very good concentration of vitamin C. And I like this because again, it layers really nicely. This one is very thin and it absorbs into the skin really fast. And I feel like it's helped a lot with the brightness of my skin. And overall in the mornings, I just look more refreshed. And I love the way that my skin has been looking recently. Just this whole cycle has been perfect. This is a super lightweight hyaluronic sunscreen. It has SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 plus. This new Isn't Tree sunscreen. They actually sent me a couple of different products and this by far has been the standout product. I am just obsessed with sunscreen. I'm a sunscreen addict. I use it every single day. It does come out quite white but you can tell it's a very thin consistency and the white of it is a very sheer one and when you blend it out it completely disappears into the skin it feels super hydrating and it's long lasting on the skin but it doesn't feel greasy like you can absolutely tell that it's hyaluronic acid and not just like filler oils within the ingredients my next favorite is this embryolise lat cream concentrate and i use this as a cream primer this is a medium textured moisture balm. It is quite luxe. I actually bought this in a two pack on Costco's website. If you guys don't know, Costco has a ton of skincare and sometimes makeup as well in packs, or they also have them in larger sizes. I first tried this as a teeny tiny sample when I was doing Ipsy bags, like, I don't even know, maybe like eight years ago. And I thought it was fine, but I honestly didn't really know how beneficial it was to have such a moisturized and hydrated face before applying makeup. This cream really soaks into the skin and it kind of dissolves any dry areas that you may have and it preps the skin really well for any makeup application that you might be doing because it won't have anything clinging to those dry areas and you want to make sure that you apply this to a clean face too. This is such a cult favorite within the beauty community and I understand why it's just simple it's clean there's no crazy fragrance to it and it really does just add that extra layer of hydration without irritating the skin this is a reused trader joe's body butter container but it has the pears soap in here i actually melted it down and put it in here for easy travel and packaging i actually purchased this at a local indian market and i think it was less than a dollar and i had seen people using pear soap on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube for a long time, but I had never purchased it. I just never really ran into it until I did. And I was like, let me just pick it up. This gives me the perfect soap brows. Honestly, it holds my brows up so well. I'll spray it with Fix Plus or just water or any sort of setting spray. I'll use a little spoolie and just rub it into that soap. And then I'll apply it all over my brows. I'll kind of go forward and backwards and down just to completely coat each hair. And then I'll let it dry for a couple of seconds and then I'll start shaping it and manipulating the brow into the shape that I want it to go in. You want to make sure that you don't use too much product, but you use just enough product for the hold. If you like that laminated brow look, it'll give you that. But if you just like feathery brows, it'll also give you that and it'll hold all day. It's amazing. So speaking of brows, I have another brow product here. This one is from Benefit. Benefit just does brow products amazingly. This is the Gimme Brow Plus Volumizing Pencil. And this is actually your traditional brow pencil where you sharpen it, but it also has fibers in it, which is really interesting. It has that pencil side, but it also has a spoolie. And I love this spoolie. I love how dense it is and how small it is because it allows me to really get into those brow hairs and shape them exactly how I want them without missing any strands. I love that you can fill in the skin under the brows and give you kind of that illusion that your brows are very, very full, but you could also use this whenever it's really sharpened and you can give yourself some really fine 
brow like hair strokes and i especially like it to define right underneath my brows and brush that in to my brows to give it a little bit more of a diffused look so my next favorite is this say glowy super gel in the shade star glow anyone that likes say likes this primer and for good reason it is one of those moisturizing very sheen giving primers it feels really nice and lightweight on the skin and it's exactly what it says it is a gel consistency and within that gel there are some like flecks of sheen and there's no glitter in it whatsoever so it makes you look moisturized as well as gives you a little bit of that shine which makes your skin look very healthy and underneath foundation or concealer whatever you decide to wear this will just make it look even more put together this does have quite a strong scent to it but it doesn't linger whenever you're putting your makeup on it's just that initial application and i did start using this in the middle of september but it quickly became a favorite and i just had to add it because it's that good so this is the house labs triclone skin tech foundation from lady gaga's makeup line and this is in the shade 260 light medium cool and truly it is my perfect match i love this foundation so much so the finish of this is very skin like it doesn't add any extra hydration but it also does not mattify the skin it seriously looks like second skin and it's a thin creamy foundation but it does have medium to buildable coverage i think it gives me i would say medium slash high coverage i can get it to that sort of coverage and it still looks really good on the skin i like that i can layer other products on this without it lifting off of the skin i prefer to use this with a sponge i feel like it really just pushes it into the skin really nicely now you can apply it with a brush as well but anytime i apply foundation with a brush i always just tap a sponge just to finish it off a little bit and allow any excess foundation to come off with that sponge or push in that foundation with the sponge. If you're looking for a staple to use whenever you have events to go to, this would be a really nice one because it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't make it look like you're wearing a mask. It almost just looks like your skin and there's something. It gives you that type of vibe, I guess. <laughs> I did a full review on this foundation. I have a video on it, so if you're interested in more information on this one, then go check that one out. So another product that I had tried and I did a full review on, and it's kind of just resurfaced again because of TikTok, is this Danessa Myrick's Blurring Balm. I have the shade six. In the video, I did test out shade four, but I ended up getting shade six because it was a better match for me throughout the summertime. But this is interesting because it is that creamy formulation, and once you apply it to the skin and it dries down, it almost gives gives a powder-like finish. So when you first apply this, it is quite creamy and thick when it's going on, almost like moussey like but when you blend it out it does thin out and it doesn't look oily or greasy and like i said it does dry down a little bit again i like to use this with a sponge it really sinks into the skin and it kind of fills in those pores it doesn't accentuate anything even though it dries down it doesn't look like you're wearing powder just layered on top of your skin i do get oily throughout the day however i kind of like the look of my skin looking a little oily like a little hydrated a little dewy you know but around that six hour mark is when I'm like okay maybe I could take a blotting sheet or maybe I could like powder a little bit you know it doesn't break up throughout the day and I really appreciate that it kind of just keeps the skin looking nice even though I have oils coming through I do want to say that this does require very hydrated skin so make sure you do some really good skin prep something like this would work really nicely as a primer, just anything that will give you a little extra hydration. There are just so many ways that you can use this, and I appreciate that there's such a multifunctional product in my routine. Next, my tried and true. I'm sure I have talked about these concealers before in past videos, but it is the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I have this in the shade 6 and 6.5. I love this concealer. It is truly my favorite concealer the reason i love this is one the shade six is just perfect for me it is just a little bit brighter than my under eyes so it gives me a little bit more of that awake look but it doesn't look too bright too stark and it also just blends into the skin incredibly and this 
almost goes on like a tinted serum, I would say. The consistency is very thin, but it has good pigmentation and the pigmentation doesn't just wash away whenever you're blending it out. I would say if you have very dark under eyes, you may have to go in with maybe two layers or a color corrector beforehand. If I decide to skip the foundation for the day, I'll use these concealers to spot conceal, do the under eyes and everything. And it just gives me such an awake, fresh look and it's amazing. I'll also say that these do set down with powder very well. My under eyes recently have just been a little bit more creasy, a little bit more textured as I get older. I think that's what's happening, but this still dries down really nicely. And if I go in with just a light hand of powder, it sets down nice. I adore these. Another concealer that I've been really enjoying, especially while I was traveling, is this Dior concealer. This is the only Dior makeup product that I own currently, but I definitely am planning on buying more because I just love this concealer so much. The tone of this is more of a neutral tone, which is perfect for using all over my face versus under my eyes. This almost matches my skin perfectly, so this is also a really good one to spot conceal with. I love the brush applicator because it's just, it feels more luxe. I don't, I don't really know what it is. And the coverage of this is, I would say, medium to high. You could definitely get like high coverage with this product, but the consistency has just enough slip to it to where it doesn't want to just like dry down on the skin. I can put this everywhere that I need to and then once I'm done, I can blend it out and it feels very creamy still and it has really good pigmentation. And yeah, I just really enjoy this. A lot of people talk about this concealer and for good reason, again, it's just so nice, so easy to work with. So for those concealers, I do have a brush that I've just been obsessed with. I've talked about the foundation counterpart of this brush in past videos, but this is the BK brush, which is in collaboration with Angie Hot and Flashy. This is the A506 brush. And as you guys can see, it does have quite an intense angle there, but it's also a dense brush. It's dense enough to blend concealer out without it being streaky. And the angle is nice because it allows you to really get in those crevices. So around the nose, right between the brows, it fits perfectly there and with I can do it without disturbing my eyebrow hairs because I typically start with my eyebrows. Right under the eye, I can get right in there and blend out the concealer. BK Beauty brushes are insanely good. The quality of them are amazing. I have so many now that I'm, I use every day and this one has truly been a standout for me recently. So I have two blush products that I wanna talk about that I took with me on my travels and they are these two. This is the Bare Minerals Blonzer in the shade Kiss of Copper and then I have the Save Blush in the shade Rosy. Now we're gonna start off with this one because I typically will pair these two together. I'm obsessed with Say. I don't know what else I can do to explain that but their products are just so minimal effort but still like high impact and this blush is no exception to that it is a beautiful rosy shade it is quite light but on my skin tone right now i think it works really nicely to just kind of give me a flush almost like it's a natural flush from within sometimes if i go a little too cool with my blush it can almost look either like a baby bubblegum pink or kind of grayish on my skin, but this is really nice because it just gives me the lightest hint of color. It does have a little bit more of a hydrated property to it, almost like it has a little bit more oil or something in the formulation. So it gives you a nice sheen, but I do need to set it down if I want it to stay throughout the day, which is fine because again, I like to layer this with different blushes. And like I said, I do have this Bare Minerals Blonzer in the shade Kiss of Copper. When I saw this, I knew I had to get it because I love a multi-functional cheek product that can work as a blush and a bronzer hence blonzer. I love the tone of this. It is more of like that sunburnt look on me. I have both the say and the blonzer on top and I feel like it just gives me a nice like flush of color. Sometimes I'll only use this and I'll skip the bronzer altogether because I feel like this gives me just enough definition on the cheeks and I'm like good to go. It's beautiful. I think that it really complements my complexion as well. I have two eye products today and they're both cream eyeshadows. The first one being this Rare Beauty one in the shade Nearly Neutral. This is what I have on my eyes today. It is a beautiful pinky 
almost medium brown shade. It does pull a little bit more pink, but on the skin, I think it does wash out into almost a brown. I love cream eyeshadows, especially ones that are sort of like this tone because I feel like they're perfect for that one and done eyeshadow look. I just feel like creams look a lot more natural and they work for the one and done eyeshadow look because whenever you blend them out, the outsides almost look like a different color. Like they, they're a little bit more complex than just like an eyeshadow, a powder eyeshadow, you know? So this is all that I have on my lids today. And as you can see, it is a little bit more of that neutral pink shade, but it's neutral enough to look natural on the crease. My next cream eyeshadow was um, a recommendation from one of you guys in my comments. Someone said that they would love to see me try a REM Beauty eyeshadow, like a cream eyeshadow. So I went and picked one up and this is either less than three or it's love or it's heart i don't i don't know <laughs> it's one of those but this shade i can't express how perfect of a neutral like medium light brown this is on my skin tone i'll show you guys swatches of what this looks like i love this alone i love it as a base for other eyeshadows or like topper eyeshadows like a shimmer shadow this is just the most beautiful neutral brown for my eyelids. It doesn't overtake where it looks like a smoky eye, you know? I feel like something like this gives me a little bit more dimension where my eyelids don't just look super flat on my face. The consistency of the REM Beauty cream eyeshadows is very thin, much thinner than the rare beauty one which is a little bit more of like a moussey texture this one definitely is just a straight liquid but it's great because that pigmentation is really there it does not disappear as you're blending it out it just kind of like diffuses into the eyelids which i think is amazing they also don't budge i don't have to use an eyeshadow primer with either one of these which is great but this is amazing truly it's it's one of the best i've tried so moving on to our last little section lip products so the first one that i have here is this fenty lip balm it is in the shade hint hint I've been using this for months, but I've never talked about it on my channel. Whenever I do my skincare in the morning, I'll pop this on at the very end. It's just a really good lip balm to start the day off with because the consistency is a little bit, I would say it's like a medium consistency. It's not thin like a lip oil, but it's not thick like a lip mask. It's just the perfect consistency. And this one I think is just they're clear or it's a very, sheer pink i feel like it actually does moisturize my lips another lip care product is this jacqueline cosmetics lip oil in the shade maple drip i'm almost halfway done with this guys can you see that that never happens i have so many lip products because i swatch and review lip products like crazy but this one i was attached to it this last month and the month of august this is probably my favorite lip oil formulation because it's a little bit thick but even though it's thick it feels like it sinks in and actually adds hydration to my lips i had originally purchased i think it was rose like it, it was one of her very first shades and i wasn't too much of a fan and i picked up maple drip and i'm obsessed with this shade it looks great alone it looks good with a lip liner i'm definitely going to be purchasing another one maybe trying another shade but honestly this one is such a perfect shade that i don't think i even would use those other shades because i would just always want to use this one <laughs> Oh, also there's no fragrance added to it that I can tell. It doesn't smell like anything crazy, so it's just nice and it's not abrasive. Okay, Rare Beauty Gloss. This one is in the shade Nearly Neutral as well. I bought these together because they were both the Nearly Neutral range, so I was like, oh, it'll be like a monochromatic look. I'm trying to think of a good way to explain the texture of this because it's nothing that I've felt before in a gloss. It's like a liquid lip balm, but creamier. But the pigmentation of this is really nice. I'm actually wearing this on top of another product I'm gonna be talking about. It feels really nice and hydrating on the lips, and the color is just a beautiful, like warm, pinky shade perfect for my complexion and I just love it. And I have two lipsticks to talk about today and one of them I'm wearing right now 
with that lip gloss and this is the Kaleidos Lab Lip Clay in the shade Adobe. Now Kaleidos sent me a PR box of all the lip clays and I was blown away. This has to be hands down my favorite formulation for liquid lipstick. I'm not crazy about liquid lipsticks because I always feel like they're a little bit drying. However, this one gives you that velvety, soft, blurred, matte lip look. It's the perfect perfect formulation if you don't like liquid lipsticks but you love that staying power this is just that perfect powdery soft blurred like just a kiss of color type of product on my complexion this is the nicest wearable nude i think that it works really nicely it doesn't like come off too bold or too powerful it's a great everyday shade there's a couple other that i'll list down in the description box that i'm also like completely obsessed with and the best part about it is it fills in my lip lines so my lips as a whole just look blurred it's the craziest thing i'm obsessed with these i love kaleidos makeup i actually have more that i'm planning on talking about on my tiktok and because i was traveling something that is long lasting and long wearing was a must so i have this mac powder kiss liquid lip color and the texture of this one is very similar to that kaleidos one their range isn't as wearable in my opinion but this one in the shade impulsive i would say it's a perfect medium brown almost like brick ready shade on me that's the shade right there the way that i like to use this is i'll use the very tip of it because it's more of a ball tip and then i'll use the middle of it because it is a little bit pinched in there on the rest of my lip and it makes application really nice and smooth and the feeling of the application is just very satisfying and as you guys may know mac does add a little bit of a like vanilla fragrance to their lip products and it's kind of like that nostalgia feeling with MAC. I will say this one is a little bit more sheer than that Kaleidos one. With the Kaleidos ones, I can do one swipe and have the perfect one swipe pigmentation on the lips. This one I'll kind of like go over a little bit, but it dries down really nicely and it feels comfortable on the lips. And again, it doesn't accentuate those lip lines. And then the last product I want to talk about is this nail product. This is the OPI Nail Envy, just the original one. And when I tell you guys this completely transformed my nails, I'm not kidding. So these are my natural nails. And to a lot of people, this is not impressive. But to me, this is insanity. For a while, I was doing my own nails. And whenever I would remove them, I actually had very old acetone that I think was not as strong as it should have been. So I was soaking my nails to death to the point where they were paper thin, like, anything even if i just slightly went like this they would bend backwards or forwards no matter what if i would just touch something it would bend my nail back it was super painful but when i started using this they started growing they got thicker they stopped peeling like i was religiously using this like every other day i was applying this it's the best it's just it's so good and i can't believe how strong and long my nails are now i love this recommend it if you're trying to grow your nails out all right, that is everything for this video. Those were all of my favorites. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any similar favorites or what you're currently loving. I'd love to know. If you enjoyed this video, found it entertaining, or if it was helpful for you, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.